Okay, let's take a look at how we can map all railway stations in Great Britain. First of all, we need a data source. This is table 6329 from the Office of Rail and Road. So I'll just click on this and download it. It's just a spreadsheet with all stations and for all stations, it's got an easting and a northing. So an X and Y coordinate that we can plot in QGIS. So I've downloaded the file. Let's take a look at it in Excel. Here's what the file looks like in Excel. There's a couple of sheets. There's a cover sheet and there's the sheet with the data. What we want to do is just copy all the cells that we want to map because it's got three header rows and we don't want them. So I'll select station name. I'll scroll to the bottom right of the data set, hold shift, select them all. I'm going to copy them and paste them as values into a new sheet. One little thing I'll do here is there's a couple of columns here that get copied in and then exactly the same header. Sometimes you find weird things happening with this. So I'll just tell you a little bit of further information. We've got Easting and Northing and the column header has got a colon in it and it's got Easting and Northing. But sometimes when we copy and paste like this, we lose anything after the colon. So I'm going to call this one Easting. And I'm going to call this one Northing. And you can see what happens. It suddenly sort of somehow reappears. So I'm just going to delete that. Delete this text. Pardon me. And make sure I've got just Easting and Northing. You might not find a problem if you don't do that, but I found I get an error with this if I don't change these two and I keep the colon in them. Okay, so that's fine. What I'm going to do now is I'll just go to File and then save it as a CSV. Once you've saved it as a CSV file, you can go to Close It. I've already saved it, so I'm not saving this copy. Then I'm going to go to QGIS, click on the button to open a data source and make sure I'm on delimited text. And then in the file name section towards the top, I'll click on the browse button and here I'm going to navigate to the file I just saved. It's in my folder. Let's scroll down until we get to O. There we go. So the first time I tried it, it had the colons in, the two column headers with the Easting and Northern, and I got an error. So I deleted that to check that that was the cause and my version two file is what I saved as a CSV from Excel. So I select that and I click open. Then there's a few things here. Usually the defaults will be fine. File format is CSV. Records and fields options should look like what I have. And of course the link for this file is in the description where you can download it and then save it as a CSV on your own machine. And in geometry definition, it's point coordinates. Usually if there's a column saying Easting, QGIS will map that to the X field, but you can always select it manually if you needed to. Easting and Northing is what we want. The key thing is we need to make sure geometry CRS, so CRS is coordinate reference system. That needs to say British National Grid. I have it in my list of frequently used ones. If you don't, you can click on the button to select the CRS. In the filter box, you can type 27700. I just happen to know that's the code for British National Grid. It's in my recently used section. If you don't see it there, then you can select it down below, click OK, and then finally I can click Add and Close. And then we get all these plotted as points on the map. And it's nice to be able to see exactly where these are. So I'll add an open street map layer via the browser panel. If your browser panel is not on, go to view panels and tick the first browser panel. Mine's already on, so I'll scroll down until I get to XYZ tiles. I'll expand that. I've added some other layers, but the default one open street map is the one I want to add. So I'll double click it. I'll click OK and don't worry, you get that message sometimes if you're adding a layer like OpenStreetMap that's a global layer to a project which uses another coordinate reference system. In this case, it's nothing to worry about, so I can zap that. And then I can left click and drag and drop the OpenStreetMap layer below the points layer. So we've got all railway stations mapped. 
So let's do a little bit more. First thing we might want to do is, well, this is just still just a CSV. So if I wanted to save this as a shape file or a geo package or a geo JSON, it's really simple. I would just right click, go to export and then save features as. And from here, I could choose geo package, shape file, or any other format, including GeoJSON, MapInfo, KML. I would just choose the format, click on the Browse button to choose what I want to save it to, and then it would be added as a new layer. I don't need to do that now, but that's how you can do it. What else could I do? I am going to zoom in to the northeast of England, and these are national rail stations, so it doesn't include things like the Tyne and Weir Metro. These are national rail stations. You will find when you're using a global map layer like OpenStreetMap that it can look a bit fuzzy if your data project was already in a different coordinate reference system. So to fix that, if you want the OpenStreetMap layer to be sharp, you can right click. So you can click in the bottom right in the EPSG section. And the one you want to use is 3857 for global map layers like the OSM base map I'm using. So I can type in 3857 there and it's this one, Studio Mercator. If I click apply, you should see it sharpens up a bit. Okay, what else can we do? Let's add a national rail symbol instead of a point. So in the layer that's got the stations, let's double click on that in the layers panel, I'll go to symbology and under simple marker, so I've selected that. I'm going to change symbol layer type to SVG marker. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this. So this is the National Rail logo and it's the SVG. The link is in the description. If I click on it to take me to the page where it's stored, I can copy that URL. I'll go back. I mean, I could save it on my computer, but I'm just copying the URL here and pasting that in. I'm going to SVG marker. I'm scrolling down until I see the box where I can paste this. You will see on my computer, I already have this symbol, but I'm just pasting in the URL. If I click apply, it will change the symbols, but they'll be quite small. So let's change the width to five and click apply. And we could give it a little kind of buffer or glow. So if I click draw effects and then click the little star and go to outer glow, we could give it kind of a white outer glow. Let's move the opacity to 100, click. There we go. And let's also go to labels. And from no labels, let's choose single labels. Station name is what we want. Let's go to text and use Arial. Let's use size seven, bold. Let's give it a buffer. And we'll make that buffer a 70% transparent, we'll click apply. Okay, and maybe increase the text size to eight and hit apply. And what we'll do as well is we'll go to rendering and we'll use scale dependent visibility. And what this means is the labels will only come on at a certain zoom level so that when we're zoomed out, it's not completely overpowering us. So if I click on the drop down and go to say 250, Let's go to 500,000 and click OK. If I zoom out, you can see the stations still appear, but only when I zoom in to a scale of less than one to 500,000 do the labels come on. So that's all the stations that all mapped, I've symbolized them. I can save my project now via project save as. I have not saved this as a new separate layer. It's still just a CSV, but like I said, you can right click and export it to any format you want. But the great thing about this layer is if I open the table and pull it in, we have loads of columns we can filter by. We can filter by region. Uh, well, that's English region actually, and also other countries in the UK. We've got local authority district code, local authority district name, we've got constituency and some other things including who owns the station. So let's have a look at that. If I right click on the layer and the layers panel on the left and go to filter and scroll down, 
if I go to station facility owner and double click it and hit equals, and then on the right, I hit all. Let me just expand this box so there's more space. If I want to find all stations that were owned by Avanti West Coast, I could double click that. So I've got the expression station facility owner equals Avanti West Coast. I can click OK. And then if I zoom out, we can see those ones. Let's change that filter. When I go back to change the filter, I, I will want to click on station facility owner. Let me delete that. I'll click on station facility owner. And if I click all now, it's only going to show me Avanti West Coast because I've already filtered it. So I'll just want to tick the box to use the unfiltered layer. And I click all and let's go to ScotRail. So let's add that to the filter. So now we're only showing where the station is owned by ScotRail. It doesn't matter here if you've got lots of spaces or no spaces, that's fine. I'll click OK. And then once I zoom in again, the labels are going to come on. And you can see this one's got new stations like Inverness Airport and it should have station at Reston as well, which is owned by ScotRail. Let's just clear the filter to OK. And that's how you can easily map all stations in Great Britain. These are national rail stations, remember, so it's not going to have things like trams in Manchester. But that's how you can do it. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. And if you do want to save that file to your preferred format, you just right click on the layer, go to export, save features as, and then choose whatever format you like best. And I hope you find that useful.